What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. The intro video that I just showed was actually a post made over on Twitter by Roaring Kitty, who hasn't made a peep in about three years. Now, I am wearing the red bandana as a nod to him. Welcome back, Kitty. But the video kind of shows that he's uh, now coming back to life. Uh, you know, the heartbeat with the uh, cat figure coming out of the, the little heartbeat meter. But coincidentally, it came at a time when I have been kind of absent uh, from posting anything here as well. Now, the reason I haven't been posting here uh, the, over the last week or two is last week, my uh, one of my dogs started having seizures really late at night, and I ended up having to take her into the emergency hospital that night. Um, and she stayed in the hospital for two nights, and I finally have her home, but I've just been spending a lot of time with her, helping her get back on her feet figuratively and literally, I've been having to help her walk and eat and go to the bathroom and everything. So I've really just been kind of holding down the fort here with her. Uh, but I'm back now and there has been a lot going on and there's a lot to cover. So before, <coughs> excuse me, before we get into all of that, uh, please again, guys, go over and show Olive Branch sanctuary some support you guys these guys are a very small sanctuary animal sanctuary with a lot of abandoned and abused animals that they've been taking in so go over and help them out they are also a certified 501c nonprofit sanctuary so everything you donate to them is a tax write-off for you as well. So go over and help them out. I do have all of these links in the description of the video. They've got a medical debt fundraiser. They've got their Instagram and Facebook over there. You can donate by uh, going over and doing their Amazon and Chewy wish list, or they've got PayPal or Venmo. So head over there and please help them out. A couple dollars really is all that it takes to really help these guys out. These are this is a probably one of the smallest sanctuaries I've ever kind of spotlighted uh, over the last six years. So go over and help them out, guys. OK, so let's get into everything that's been going on. Roaring Kitty is back. And no, it's not just important because he's another uh, cat financial YouTuber. Um, if you don't know who Roaring Kitty is, he was kind of the big influencer during the GME, the Game Stock, uh, GameStop stock craze in 2020. And while GME isn't specifically about crypto, the underlying things that happened during the GME stock craze really is essentially about what crypto is technically all about. So let me explain uh, what happened with uh, GameStop was some big hedge funds began shorting GME stock and basically began killing the company. And what Roaring Kitty did was influence a massive uh, GME um, retail investment community. And what they ended up doing was taking down some really big hedge funds. They made these hedge funds like Mervyn Capital go bankrupt. Uh, because if price goes up when you're shorting it, there isn't any, uh, uh, there's no stop to the amount that a, a company can lose. So yeah, they, they really kind of started to screw over these big hedge funds that were uh, shorting GameStop. Now they hedge funds. This is what hedge funds do. Uh, they did it. They did the same thing to Toys R Us. 
Uh, but when they came for GameStop, it seems like the community kind of stood up and was like, you're not, no, you're not going to do that again. You're not coming for our games. Now, uh, it's, it's really kind of a David versus Goliath um, story. And if you haven't seen any of the movies or documentaries on the GameStop saga, I highly recommend it. If you have Netflix, I believe Dumb Money is on Netflix. Um, now, Dumb Money is the Hollywood recreation of the GameStop saga uh, starring Seth Rogen and Paul Dano. Great movie. I believe it's on Netflix, but Netflix also has a documentary. It's a three part documentary called Eat the Rich, which was outstanding. So go over and check those out. But spoiler alert, if you um, if you haven't seen it or don't know about it in the end, the big guys, Mervyn Capital and Citadel, with the help of Robin Hood, ended up really screwing over the little guys, you know, the retail investors, uh, which they call dumb money. Now, Robin, Robin Hood, the reason Robin Hood was so huge in this story was they were kind of the go to platform for a lot of the retail investors that were investing into GME stock. So what happened was Citadel, who is the market maker for Robin Hood, but they're also very highly tied to uh, Mervyn Capital, which was the company that was shorting the hedge fund that was shorting GME. Citadel went to, to, um, to Robin Hood in defense of Mervyn Capital and said, do something about this. And so Robin Hood, what Robin Hood did was they shut off the buy button specifically on GameStop stock. So you could you could sell bit or you you could sell GameStop, but you couldn't buy GameStop. And what you what that does to the price, if you can only sell. That just means that the price can only go down. It can't go up because people can't buy. So this was very much a protection of uh, that big hedge fund, Mervyn Capital, and it really screwed over the retail investors, the people that Robinhood is supposed to be servicing. So no, GME wasn't about crypto on the surface but it very much is about centralized control over finances where those, those in power can shut you down and shut off your financial abilities. And that is exactly what Bitcoin and crypto is all about and what it aims to fix. It's very much about your self-sovereignty and permissionless use of your finances. And we continue to see this happening. Yesterday, after Roaring Kitty came back to life, we saw GameStop and AMC and a bunch of meme cryptocurrencies just skyrocket, just based on crypto or on uh, on Roaring Kitty starting to post again. And in response to GameStop skyrocketing, guess what happened? Several halts on trading for GME on the NASDAQ yesterday happened. Just time and time again, all the way through yesterday, which is pure market manipulation uh, meant to protect the big guys that are once again shorting GameStop. So guys, this is just business as usual for traditional finance. And this is what Bitcoin and DeFi and decentralized exchanges all really seek to fix. Because the little guys, I, I'm sorry to say it, but the little guys will never win in traditional finance. The game is rigged against you. 
So also in the news recently um, was Robin Hood. And the SEC has issued a Wells notice to Robinhood specifically for their crypto trading platform. Now, there's a few things that are, are really interesting about all of this. The first is that unlike Coinbase and other exchanges that the SEC has sued, Robinhood actually is a registered securities broker with the SEC. So the question has been asked, why can't Robinhood just uh, offer crypto trading under their existing securities license? And here is a video about Vlad, the CEO of Robinhood and what he said. So I want to talk about crypto for a second. You saw really strong volume growth with crypto, but over the weekend, SEC, or you guys at least disclosed, as well as notice from the SEC, essentially. We did, yes. Saying that Robinhood was offering unregistered securities. Feels like there's a bit of a disconnect. So you've got Gary Gensler on one side saying, just come on in and register. You, Coinbase, the other crypto trading platforms out there have said it's impossible. We're going to fight this. What is the disconnect? You're a stock brokerage firm. Why couldn't you just do the same thing you do with stocks, go in there, register everything, and call it a day? It's not that easy. Uh, the existing securities laws and framework don't account for crypto assets. And uh, there's a number of reasons why uh, the, the notion of a clearing agency and transfer agent and all sorts of details. But the upshot of it is, uh, we tried to create what's called a special purpose broker dealer for the purpose of transacting in crypto assets. Um, and we actually came in good faith to meet with the SEC. I think we met with them 16 times. And unfortunately that was not reciprocated. And it was clear that uh, there didn't seem to be a path. And so here we are. You met with them 16 times and made no progress? 16 times. That's right. What is that about? Um, it's, it's hard to impute the reasoning behind that, um, but uh, they told us they didn't want to keep meeting about it and they didn't see a path toward it. So definitely the SEC has the ability to change the rules to allow for brokers to uh, accommodate crypto assets and they don't seem intent on doing that and rather they're proceeding with regulation by enforcement and that's disappointing and I didn't want to uh, have to get into this situation but we have to defend ourselves and advocate for our customers. We do believe that crypto assets are becoming more and more important and it would not be acceptable to us to not have Americans uh, have access to them. So I'm not a fan of Vlad or or Robin Hood, specifically because of what they did during the GameStop uh, crazy, you know, thing in 2020. Uh, what they did was absolutely criminal, was total market manipulation. And on top of that, it, it hurt the people that use their company. So it's absolutely criminal in my mind. However, what the SEC is doing is they're going after uh, Robinhood for offering cryptocurrencies, not actually going after Robinhood for actually what, they're, what they've done wrong, what they've actually criminally done. Instead, they're just going after Robinhood to attack crypto, essentially. Now, the second thing is that Robinhood delisted all of the cryptocurrencies that the SEC named as securities in their suit against Coinbase and Binance last year. So clearly the SEC doesn't care if companies are trying to follow the rules. They just are flat out attacking crypto as a whole right now. So the third thing I want to get into, guys, is uh, Paul Gruel the head lawyer for Coinbase,
put out a few tweets yesterday, and I, I just want to jump over to that. So Paul says here, what about you, Robin Hood? Did you get a thorough explanation in your Wells process? How about you, Ripple, Uniswap, Kraken, Binance, anyone else? This is straight up gaslighting before Judge Shelby and the U.S. District Court. It should not stand. So getting further into this, I'm just going to read a few of these tweets. In a brief to, advo uh, to avoid dismissal of its case against Debtbox, with prejudice, the SEC includes a remarkable admission that it did not follow its own typical Wells process when it refused to tell us what the assets would be, what assets would be charged as securities. The Wells process was designed to aid the charging decision for a specific potential defendant. The SEC staff typically provides a thorough explanation of the evidence it would use to prove potential charges against a particular person or entity. Now he goes on in this next one, he says, we received no thorough explanation of the evidence of what assets supposedly gave rise to security transactions. We weren't told what assets were at issue at all. Why would the government not, not follow its typical process in our case? And what does that say about its claims? So for some context there, what Wells notice is, is it's a warning to a company that the SEC thinks that you may be in uh, violation of securities laws. But the Wells notice, um, what it does is it informs a company of these violations and gives them a chance to come to the SEC and explain their position. Now, this hasn't been the case with these cryptocurrency Wells notices, apparently. You know, they're not telling these companies what they're doing wrong, what, what uh, they're doing that amounts to a securities uh, transaction or anything. They're just giving kind of a blank Wells notice, and then later they're bringing suit against them without giving them that typical chance to come forward and address the issue. So... Uh, just discouraging. It's just another way that we see that the SEC is treating crypto differently and just flat out attacking crypto and being hostile against cryptocurrency as a whole. So the next thing I want to get into is some news uh, about another SEC rule. Now I'm going to hop over here to this article says, uh, Congressmen discuss House vote to reverse SEC policy on crypto custody. So what this is about is there was a rule that the SEC passed just recently. It's called SAB 21. And what it does is it essentially makes it impossible for banks to uh, custody cryptocurrency. Now, this isn't about uh, banks owning cryptocurrency. It's just about them uh, custodying cryptocurrency on behalf of their customers. Now, the reason this is important is because this is one way that banks can pivot and embrace cryptocurrency in a way that helps them survive, but um, but it helps cryptocurrency because if I wanted to take my Bitcoin and go to a bank and say, hey, I want a loan, I want to put this my Bitcoin up for collateral and get a loan from you. This actually makes banks still prevalent, gives them a way that they can still continue to be relevant despite what Bitcoin and cryptocurrency does in giving people self-sovereignty. So anyways, this uh, getting into this article, I just want to scroll down and read this um, 
this little blurb here. It says, despite the White House issuing a policy statement stating that if HJR 109, which is this, uh, this bill um, that repeals the SEC's rule, that SAB 21, uh, 121. So it, it, President Biden has come out and made this statement that says he will veto it. <laughs> and despite that, 21 Democrats still broke ranks to join with Republicans to pass the resolution and send it to the Senate for con consideration. So I've, I've actually read some of these uh, Democratic senators' statements on the subject, and they're saying, you know, look, our constituents want to trade currency or cryptocurrency. Why are we stopping uh, them from doing this? You know, we're voting against this. And so it's, it's just crazy that Biden... And the Biden administration is coming out so hard against this. They've they've actually decided that they're going to make this a political issue, even though really it's not a it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a political issue at all to self sovereign your own money. But unfortunately, they are coming out against it. Um, you know. They, it's, it's just odd, guys, because the Democratic Party kind of bolsters itself uh, as being very pro-working class. Um, they just don't want you, <laughs> they just don't want the working class to be able to self-custody their own financial assets, apparently. So anyways... Um, it's not just Biden either. Actually, the big player here is Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren is the big player in this whole anti-crypto movement. Not only is, is she directly responsible for Gary Gensler being put into chair position at the SEC, but she also formed what she calls the anti-crypto army. And about every single thing that she's said lately is something about how we need to stop crypto because crypto is only used for illegal things and, you know, basically calling all of us criminals. Um, you know, she she's very much in the in the position that the dollar is the only thing that we need we don't need to be self-sovereign we don't need bitcoin we don't need a way to opt out of the fed's constant money printing printing just get rid of all of that and let's make everyone stay in the dollar now the irony here is that elizabeth warren was elected in 2013 and she largely ran on a platform just like Obama did that she was going to hold banks accountable for the 2008 financial crisis. However, now she is siding with the banks. She put out a bill last year that would have effectively made it illegal to self custody your own cryptocurrencies. And guess who wrote uh, that bill for her? None other than JP Morgan. So you can kind of see this alliance that she has with big banks now. And it's, it's just hypocritical because she, she comes off as this very, she's very for the working class. You know, she's trying to help the working class except when it comes to owning your own financial freedom. So, <laughs> I don't know. The big thing here with Elizabeth Warren is that she wants to get decentralized cryptocurrencies out of the way and make way for central bank digital currencies. Now, what central bank digital currencies would do is it would put 
government in control of literally every single transaction. So it gives Elizabeth Warren and the government full control over everyone's financial uh, freedom. I guess you can't call it freedom because it's con completely given control back to the government. Instead of taking that, that power and giving it to everyone, everyone specifically, giving them control over their finances, it's taking it away entirely and giving it to the government. So here's a, a quick video. This um, actually came out, I think, in 2023, but I just haven't, I haven't shown it on my channel yet. But this is Senator Warren talking about Bitcoin and her thoughts on central bank digital currencies. Listen in. We could be talking about, instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency. Now, that's something very different. I think that's different, too. I buy that. I accept that. That's right, because yeah. that's a government-backed mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic transfer. And it can be denominated in dollars. It could be denominated in euros. It could be denominated in some new language that's made up. But that has something that backs it up. It has a government. So, yes. Elizabeth Warren hates Bitcoin, hates crypto, but did you see how excited she was for central bank digital currencies? Now, on the flip side of things, we have Trump, who in 2020 said that Bitcoin was a, a complete fraud, and just a, a few months ago or so, he came out and said that going off of the dollar was the equivalent of losing a war. But now he's saying something completely different. So listen into this for, for just a second. This actually just came out uh, seven, uh, probably four or five days ago. So listen to this. Thank you for the statement. Yeah, with the goggles on. Uh, a lot of the smartest people in crypto are moving their businesses out of the U.S. because they're scared of like uh, the U.S.'s regulations. Because of the hostility. Correct. Yeah, so, crypto is moving out of the U.S. because of hostility toward crypto. Correct. So what are you going to do to stop it? Well, we'll stop it because I don't want that. I don't want that. I want that. If we're going to embrace it, we have to let them be here. Now, it's really hard to really know what tr uh, what Trump would do for cryptocurrency if if reelected, he consistently contradicts himself um, on the subject. And one thing is for sure, Trump is very keen on talking his audience. So if he sees his audience as being for something, he will always come out in favor of that thing. So I'm not really sure if you, if you can really trust what he's saying in that video or not. Um, honestly, I don't know if you can trust much that comes out of Trump's mouth, but it is, it is out there, so whatever. Um, the only other option, guys, that we even have is RFK. <laughs> and, and as ridiculous as that, that sounds, um, you know, he has said some positive things about crypto in the past, but I can't say that I love all of his views. However, I will say that an RFK presidency would probably be the most interesting thing that could come out of this election. Uh, I mean, on one hand, I hate the idea of another four years with Biden. On the other hand, I cringe, I absolutely cringe at the thought of another Trump presidency. So <laughs> the one interesting thing that I think could happen is that we actually get an independent in office. Um, I, I don't know. It, it would absolutely be interesting. And I don't say that as an uh, endorsement for RFK by any means. I just think it would be interesting to see an independent win.
because we haven't, guys, we haven't had an independent president outside of the, the Republicans and Democrats for, <laughs> guys, this is going to probably blow you away. We've only had one other independent president. And can you guess who that was? George Washington. So since our first, our very, very first president of the United States, since then, we have been completely beholden to this one party system. Now I say one party system uh, because, because they both serve the rich, okay? Both the Democrats and the Republicans both serve the rich. In the US, we have uh, very much what is called a plutocracy, which is a government run by the money. And we all know this, you know, no matter which side you find yourself leaning towards, nearly everyone can agree that the government is run by money. I mean, it, it honestly, it takes uh, the, the statistic of the, from the last um, election cycle was that it took, it took on average $15 million to run a successful political Senate campaign. $15 million is what it takes to get a Senate seat. Okay, so that is the definition of a plutocracy. Now, on top of being a plutocracy, we also have a geriocracy. We have an 81-year-old, a 77-year-old, and a 70-year-old. Those are our three choices for president. Now, I'm not bagging on old people here, uh, you know, but if, if you're working on 80 years old, your driving abilities are probably starting to decline, let alone running an entire country. So I don't know, guys, I am, I am obviously very nihilistic about our political system in the US, but if I've uh, made any of you mad about talking badly about your favorite p political sport team, uh, just rest assured that I won't be voting against your team in November. No matter who you're voting for, I won't be voting against them. So <laughs> you, can, you can at least feel like I'm on your side in that way, I guess. So getting back to the SEC and Gary Gensler, it just seems like Gary Gensler has no intention uh, to stop attacking crypto, despite having his legs cut off uh, in the courts from XRP winning their case against the SEC, Grayscale winning their case, Bitcoin ETFs being approved, uh, the judge dismissing half of the entire case against Coinbase, and, and then the courts sanctioning the SEC in the debt box case. Despite all of that, Gary just seems like he's a, you know, kind of a rabid dog and is just out, out to attack crypto. So I, I just, at this point, I, I find it hard uh, to see the SEC approving the Ethereum ETFs, which are due uh, I believe the 23rd of this month is the first final deadline for the Ethereum ETFs. And I just don't think Gary is done fighting, which ultimately will lead to another court case, just like Grayscale, where either Grayscale or BlackRock or ARK or Fidelity will probably sue the SEC. And the court case will most likely be won. It's just going to take a few years, I guess, longer, 
with Ethereum. Uh, now, the reason I say that that court case will probably win is because the sh uh, because um, short of staking Ethereum, the Ethereum and the Bitcoin ETF situations are exactly the same. Now, if you remember, uh, remember back uh, on my previous video about the Ethereum ETFs, I was saying, you know, they have, they, we already have ETFs, uh, future ETFs for Ethereum, which was the big precursor for Bitcoin ETFs to be approved. We had Bitcoin futures ETFs, and the courts said that if you have futures, if you approve future ETFs, then you have to, you pretty much have to approve spot Bitcoin ETFs. So we already have those future futures ETFs for Ethereum. And that's why the case for, for uh, Ethereum spot ETFs is kind of a done deal. But if you remember back to that Ethereum ETF video, I had said that Fidelity had written into their application for an Ethereum ETF that they were going to stake Ethereum. And I was pretty harsh about that because I think that it is legit a legitimate reason that the SEC could deny the applications. But it also creates a centralization issue with Ethereum's validators. And that's a that's an entirely different um, issue. Uh, but what's interesting is just a few days ago, ARC 21 amended their Ethereum application to specifically say that they were not going to stake Ethereum. So in my opinion, ARC21 is kind of setting themselves up for that legal battle if it comes down to it. But back in 2020, during the election, it was widely viewed that Biden uh, if Biden won, it would be good for crypto. And it was mainly on the basis that Gary Gensler would be appointed to the SEC, ironically. <laughs> now, the reason that this was thought to be so favorable was that Gary Gensler was a professor at MIT who taught about blockchain technology. And he was, there's many videos out there that um, are of, of Gary Gensler teaching courses at MIT, and he's saying very favorable things about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, which are just complete, in complete opposition of what he's saying and doing now. So guys, yesterday I, I spent a bunch of time putting together a funny little video about kind of what it's like or what it's been like since Gary has taken chair of the SEC. Listen. You have proved yourself worthy. Will you join me? So Gary got into office and was just kind of silent on cryptocurrency for a long time, with exception to giving preferential treatment to one exchange. And that exchange was FTX. So when FTX went down, we all of a sudden saw Gary puff up his chest and be crypto cop. You make me sad. So be it. Come, Patsy. None shall pass. What? None shall pass. So be it. And then we saw what happened with XRP. <laughs> Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? And Grayscale. <laughs> and Coinbase. Look, stop that. Chicken. Chicken. Look, I'll have your leg. Right. <laughs> right, I'll do you for that. You what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? I'm invincible. You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs! Ha! 
And then the big blow came from the debt box case where the SEC was sanctioned by the courts. Come on, then. All right, we call it a draw. Come, Patsy. Oh, oh, I see. Anyways, guys, that video took me way longer than it should have, but it was just something fun that I could kind of do. Um, just kind of reminded me, you know, er all these things that that are going on with uh, the courts and the SEC just really reminded me of that. Just Gary's unrelentless, just doesn't matter how bad they look or how bad they lose. They are just out for crypto, apparently. So anyways, guys, if you liked anything in this video, please give me a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys all in the next video.